welcome back to the channel guys this is going to be another review uh, this is actually of a figure that i probably did not mention uh, during the last uh, couple of videos but this is a custom figure project based on tom cruise's character lestat from interview with the vampire and it prepared to ship this week it went up for pre-order probably about a year ago maybe somewhere around there and it, it was preparing to ship this week i just received mine yesterday um and I have to say, I'm definitely impressed. And before we even get into the review, you know, as usual, please hit the like button on these videos, guys. It helps the algorithm. It helps us out as YouTubers. And, um, you know, people can't ever complain of, of why uh, or ask me over and over again, how come my videos or us in the custom hobby, um, you know, don't have more views on our channels. And it's, it's because folks don't hit the like button. <laughs> so again, Hit the like button, guys. Like we'll have we'll have videos that are watched 500 times or even a thousand times or whatever, and they'll only have 20 likes or 40 likes, and that's it. <laughs> Hit the like button, man. Help us out. Jeez, can you imagine how high uh, uh, this video or any video that we do in the custom hobby would be if people actually hit the damn like button? <laughs> and uh, as always, to browse the uh, the channel, if you like the video, subscribe, hit the notification stuff, and you know, and we'll go from there. So as you can see from the uh, this little shot that I have, um, this is a quote from the movie of Interview with the Vampire. And as you can see, it says, Then on the diet of the blood of snakes, toads, and all the putrid life of the Mississippi, slowly Lestat became something like himself again. <laughs> and if you guys are wondering, you know, uh, what interview with the vampire even is or who the hell Tom Cruise even is you know this video is probably gonna confuse you but obviously this movie came out in 1994 I was only 14 years old when this movie first came out and um, it, it was cool uh, I didn't see it in the theater at least I don't think I did it I think I watched it when it came uh, out on um, blu-ray or not blu-ray I didn't have blu-rays back then <laughs> but DVD or VHS or whatever uh, but come to think of it maybe I did actually see this movie in the theater um, but anyway uh, Tom Cruise was in this movie, and the line um, on this uh, little foam insert that you get is based on uh, some dialogue that he's saying at the end while he's uh, um, at the piano. And I don't want to spoil the movie too much for people that haven't seen it, but you know it's uh, one of the, one of the best scenes and sequences in the entire film uh, towards the end. So you know if you haven't seen this movie, definitely check it out. If you have seen this movie, you're really gonna love this. And of course, you guys are probably wondering who actually made this figure set. It's like, come on, Chris, you know, tell us who made the damn thing. And this was a figure set that was put together by uh, Jacob Ramier. Uh, Jacob Ramier, or Ramier, uh, I always pronounce his last name wrong. Uh, but, and his brother, Rob, you know, he helps kind of behind the scenes with the logistics. And uh, they got this figure set together, and I think it was one of their first runs. Uh, the head sculpt was done by, uh, as you can see on this COA that I'm showing you here. Uh, you know, it says Vivek uh, Castier, but he also goes by the name, I think, of Sal Claudio, I believe. He has an Instagram. Um, the hands, which I'm going to obviously show you in a little while, were done by Cruise Designs. You know, the paint on the head sculpt was done by Jacob. Uh, he also, I believe he also did the hair as well. Um, tailoring was done by the, uh, the t very talented Yunsel, who was very backed up all the time. And some of the accessories, I think the cup was made by Andy and... Um, and then as you can see on here, the uh, and Andy Maniloff, that's the guy from uh, Doggy Doc Designs, if you don't know who the hell that is. And uh, web design was uh, Jeffrey of Casio, so that's probably the person who, you know, structured the pre-order for the website. You know, I'm thinking, uh, if I'm wrong, you know, I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, yeah, those are everyone that's involved. You get to see a way, like I said, from uh, for the set, and th that was actually created by Andy as well from Doggy Doc. So uh, cool COAs, and obviously right there I have number two is 17. Yonsel gives hers, and that's it. Let's just get into the figure now. I think we had enough look at uh, the uh, COAs and some of the inserts. <laughs> uh, the box itself, if you guys were wondering, you know, it didn't come with an art box. Uh, it came with your, you know, basic kind of, um, you, you know, figure case. And uh, as you can see right there, you know, that's that's essentially it. So if anyone's wondering, you know, did it come with like a graphic or anything on the front or like a slip cover? Uh, it did not come with that. So let's get into the figure review, shall we? Okay, so here is the figure. And this guy is dynamic, man. It, I was really impressed with this. I, I was 
worried, you know, as we all do in customs and whether it's mainstream or custom, you know, if things are going to take a hit production quality wise, but overall really, really good. So as, as usual, let's, you know, I guess we'll start at the bottom, you know, kind of give you a look at the shoes. The shoes were, I believe done by someone, they, uh, Kane productions, I believe, uh, they're, you know, uh, an artist out in the custom hobby as well. And I think Yunsel did some of the, the Fox leather, fo Fox leather, <laughs> Fox leather. <laughs> I can't ever say that word. Um, and uh, it's not real leather on the shoes, but still awesome, you know. And then as you go up on the outfit, Yunsel did uh, the majority of this outfit, if not, you know, obviously the whole thing. And um, you get the stockings. I mean, he's based on this is character is based on an aristocrat, you know, uh, very refined, um, conservative, uh, classy, you know, character. You know, if you guys read the book, you see the movie, you, you know what I'm talking about. You know, this is uh, that period of time in in Paris, and um, this is how they dressed. And as we go up on the outfit, you can see that it, 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 excellent tailoring to the to the movie. Um, there are some inaccurate pieces, but I, I will talk about that. Uh, but as we go up on it, the uh, you know all the weathering on there, the dirt, the grime um, is all done by Jacob uh, Yunsel. Like I said, did the outfit. And as we go up, um, I'm going to show you some shots of uh, you know the some other from the prototype. But we'll get into that in a second. But as we go up and we go up to the sculpt, I mean, the paint app by Jacob is great. The overall presence of this thing is awesome. And, uh, but here's where, you know, with positives are also negatives, right? So a couple things that I have done to this figure um, to change it, to make it a little bit more accurate to the film. Um, so the hair itself. So as you can see in this shot, I'm gonna show you some pictures. The hair is not supposed to be um, very, very long. And this is a shot that I took a couple days ago or yesterday, I posted it to the groups. So you can see where the hair is down like you know, past almost like the nipple line uh, of where uh, the figure would be or a human body would be, right? So in the film, as you can see, going back to this, it should only be um, down, you know, past the collar a little bit, you know, above the chest line um, or where the below, maybe slightly where the below the collarbone. So I adjusted that. Again, you guys know I'm all about screen reference. I, I want to try to get it as close to the film as possible without, you know, going past the point of no return. And um, uh, certain custom figures, if you can do that, you know, you can adjust it a little bit, make it more screen accurate. There you go. And I use a little bit of pomade, uh, you know, in the hair to give it that wetter, stringier look, which he had in the film. Because again, what happens to him, it should it should look like that. And um, that was pretty much it. And now it's more accurate, you know, to the movie. And then it, it carries that presence of Tom Cruise from that scene a little bit more as well. And then those of you who are wondering too, real quick, you know, why he looks like this, you know, why is he all dirty? Why is he all grimy? If you haven't seen the movie, uh, but he's he's a vampire. And he, him and his, uh, he, he makes this other person, uh, Louie, another character in the film, into a vampire. And then them together decide to turn this little girl into a vampire. And this little girl in the book is supposed to be like around five or six years old. But in the movie, it's Kirsten Dunst. And she was, I think, like maybe 10 or 12 in the movie or something like that. And she wants to be free from Lestat, you know, this character. She wants to, you know, her and Louie to get away from him. And the only way to do that, she comes up with this uh, grand scheme to kill him. And in the movie, in the book, in the lore, you vampires cannot drink from dead bodies. You know, the, the blood has to be warm. There has to be some life left in the body because if the body is dead, it's poison. It will kill them. So she, uh, you know, Louis had no idea this was going to happen. He ends up, uh, or she ends up, uh, or he ends up coming home. And Lestat comes home as well. And... Uh, they end up, uh, there's these two bodies sitting there and she basically says, hey, you know, I left you dinner essentially. And he's like, okay, great. And he drinks the blood thinking that, you know, they're freshly dead or still alive partly. And they're not. All of a sudden he gets really sick and he basically uh, shrivels up and dies essentially almost in front of them. But she also slices his throat. And um, after that happens, they dispose of the body and I, I'm assuming they must have thrown him in some kind of swamp. And, and at some point in the film, I, at this point, I think they were back in America, I believe, at least I think so anyway, because when he comes to, uh, or when they come back to the apartment one day and they open uh, the door and they come in, this is who you see. You see him at the piano, playing the piano, and then he, he speaks the dialogue that's on that foam insert that I just showed you guys in the beginning. And, you know, he's talking about how we had the feast on alligators, I think, and like snakes, I think. And I don't know if he said rats or not, but he, he said like all the fine creatures of the Mississippi, basically. <laughs> and so that was, again, if he, he's talking about the Mississippi, I'm assuming he was back in America at that time. But this is why he looks like that. He had essentially had to crawl out of a swamp, I'm assuming. And 
you know, ended up, uh, you know, it was dirty and looked like complete garbage. And some of those creatures, you know, were rep reptilians uh, that he had to f uh, feed from, you know, got him back to some kind of life. And, uh, you know, he was able to come back to them and uh, get his revenge to an extent. Uh, so I won't ruin that and what happens after that. But you guys get the idea. This is why he looks, you know, how he looks. And uh, so again, you know, another negative piece where you could, you know, deduct some points if we're really talking about that, you know, the vest itself. So here's what the vest looked like in the movie. Here is what the vest looks like here, obviously, in the figure. And uh, the vest is not 100% accurate. Uh, does it still carry the presence and, um, you know, and, and carry across the, the figure itself. Do you know who it is when you look at it? Absolutely. But, you know, the, the vest itself is not accurate to the film. But it's okay. Uh, it's not as weathered as the prototype, as you can see here. Um, you know, it, 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 that's okay. You know, again, it's not a deal breaker for me. And real quick, too, I'll show you the prototype head sculpt as well. And as you can see from here, the hair was actually shorter as well. It was actually um, passed to the collarbone where it should be. It's not down past the nipple line where it, it was like on the figure out of the box. But like I said, easily adjustable. And as we uh, go back to some positives, actually, real quick, looking at these hands, um, you know, this is awesome. You know, Chris Albright, he's the guy who runs, uh, who uh, his company, uh, you know, his custom accessory company, uh, I think he calls himself Cross Designs. You know, he did the hand, and this is an incredible accessory to have because the, the little thimble spike that he has on his finger, that, that, that thumb um, attachment that he puts on, that he basically, you know, as a vampire, it's, I guess it's good to have. He's he able to open up the bloodline on someone's arm, you know, or in their jugular. And so I love that he, he added this hand. It, it, it is fantastic. And that little piece, man, it, it really, really speaks to the character. And awesome paint application from Jacob, the details on this are fantastic, you know, and it's weathered and painted uh, to match the face, you know, because again, he's he's uh, decrepit and was he's coming back from life. The guy was basically dead, essentially. Uh, but I just wanted to mention that, you know, just awesome detail uh, to the uh, to the hand itself and and uh, the accessories too in general. You know, the, the cup from Andy is awesome. The uh, the bench itself is also really good uh, it's nothing fancy you know i think it was a third-party bench you know jacob repainted it the uh the, the the um the piano of course you know before i forget about that you know jacob essentially procured that assembled it um painted it and then included that as an accessory so as as i told you you know from the scene of the movie this is absolutely a must need you need you, you have to have this accessory with the figure you know it embodies that scene so it, it's it's awesome you can just have the uh the figure up next to it i'm definitely not going to be putting it you know in, in the seat um because it in the detolf it doesn't light right that way the light doesn't hit the sculpt you know very well and you want it displayed well man you want it to look great so i'm definitely not going to have him seated and obviously he does get up out of his seat you know at some point to go after them when he when he's when he's he infiltrates or, or, or gets into their uh, their living space um, so he is standing up technically obviously but you know I, I don't care about putting him in the seat because you hide too many details man you, you you lose the the weathering on the suit or on the outfit the tailoring you, you you can end up concealing a lot of the awesome parts of the figure so no way in hell, you know, am I going to keep him in the seat. So for those of you wondering like, oh man, you should have him in the seating pose. You know, no, no way guys, no way. That would just be, uh, you know, again, doing, doing the figure a disservice. You know, you're going to lose a lot of details that way. Uh, but it's awesome just having it all together. And other than that, guys, I mean, that's really it. The only negative, uh, you know, things that I would say, you know, again, the, the vest, you know, uh, more accurate would have been nice, you know, closer to the prototype would have been great. Uh, you know, the hair I did have to shorten a little bit, add some pomade. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned that. The pomade doesn't, it's alcohol free, doesn't hurt the sculpt, it doesn't hurt the hair. You know, it just gives it that stringier wet look like it should. Because again, the guy just came out of a swamp. <laughs> um, but yeah, just very impressed with this set. And, and those of you guys who have not seen the movie, you know, this, uh, you know, I always like giving you guys some, some talk about the film. You know, Brad Pitt, you know, some things you guys may not know about this movie. Brad Pitt did not like filming this, uh, filming this movie. He, he was not a happy camper. You know, everyone says that. Uh, Tom Cruise is sometimes hard to work with, and then he was uh, upset, too, about the filming. You know, his part wasn't as advertised, and uh, he I think he actually tried to talk to the director or the producer to try to get out of it, from what I understand, and, and uh, he was like, you know, what would it take for me to get out of this contract and this movie? And the guy basically told him, $40 million, that's what it'll take. <laughs> so he's like, all right, I guess I'm not going to be uh, bailing out of this movie. I'm just going to have to suck it up, and that's what he essentially said. He's like, I'm just going to have to tough this out and do it. Um, you know, and Ann Rice, the, the person who wrote, wrote the book, 
she did not want Tom Cruise as his character. She thought he was the worst casting choice, uh, you know, for the role. But then he ended up proving her wrong. Uh, you know, Tom Cruise actually got into the role. He heard what she was saying, and he used that as motivation. You know, he started studying uh, the role more. He read the book multiple times. He read other books by Anne Rice. He went to Paris. He spent time in museums. He did all kinds of stuff that basically a, an artist, a actor should do, you know, to get into the role, to understand the period, the time, and the character. And he did all of that, and he nailed it, dude. And even Anne Rice said it, uh, you know, after she watched the movie afterwards, because when she casted him, I think she kind of withdrew herself or when they, the studio casted him, she kind of withdrew herself from the production. But when she watched the movie, she was blown away about how good he was. I mean, and, and he, uh, he, he, he did a great job. And to this day, um, you know, I don't think Tom Cruise has ever won an Academy Award. It's a shame. Um, you know, it really is, but it, it is what it is. He was great in that role. And he probably could have uh, maybe scored an Academy Award for that, but uh, you know, you know how the Academy Award is. They, they don't like uh, nominating horror films, which is ridiculous. But you know, hey, what are you gonna do? But yeah, I just wanted to give you guys, you know, a little bit tidbits about the movie um, because uh, you know, not all films are are pleasant to make. <laughs> and uh, t another uh, funny piece is that Tom Cruise is a short guy uh, too, as well. And the, uh, you know, Brad Pitt was about four inches taller than him. And certain scenes they had to have uh, Brad Pitt like walking in like ditches, essentially, like man-made ditches. So it would look like uh, they were either the same height or that Tom Cruise was taller. <laughs> uh, good old uh, drama, man. Political crap in, 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 the, uh, in, the, in the filmmaking business. But that's it, guys. And I just wanted to show you this. I hope you enjoyed the review, some of the tidbits about the movie. And again, if this is their first figure run, you know, this is, uh, they hit a home run for the most part. Like I said, a few gripes uh, here and there, but overall it doesn't take away from the figure. And like I said, this pose itself, it just, it carries off the, the character, carries through the character of Lestat. And there's just no way in hell, like I said um, before, uh, like I mentioned, I'm, no way I'm having this guy seated behind the, the piano. There's way too many details to show um and i do not want any of that concealed so anyway guys i hope you enjoyed it uh again please like the video uh you know it helps us and don't complain why these videos aren't out there more it's because you don't like the videos <laughs> all right guys peace i'll see you at the next one